myself sonia geo a faculty of silver hills public school working in physics department here i am going to discuss about the chapter force and laws of motion of class 9 cbse so force means it's simple a push or pull so you know that force means it's push or pull of an object and this force is expressed by a unit newton then motion motion is the phenomenon in which an object changes its position over time so you know that if an object is at rest it is always at rest suppose if you want to change that object in motion you want to apply a force on it so in this chapter the important topic is newton's laws of motion so this newton's laws of motion that consists of three laws newton's first law newton's second law and newton's third law so first of all we are going to discuss about newton's first law of motion so this first law is also known as law of inertia so let's discuss about what is inertia so inertia means the resistance of a body to change its state of rest or of uniform motion unless an external force is applied that means if an object is at rest it is always at rest the tendency of the object to keep its rest always or if an object is in motion that tendency of an object is to keep that motion always there are different types of inertia inertia of rest inertia of motion and inertia of direction so here first one inertia of rest inertia of rest means the resistance of a body to change its state of rest so here you can see one of the activity on the board look at the board you can see one of the glass on the glass we want to keep one cardboard then keep one five rupee coin then just we want to pull this card so look at the second picture you can see that the coin falls inside in the glass it's because of inertia of rest so inertia of rest means the resistance of a body to change its state of rest next one inertia of motion so inertia of motion means the resistance of a body to change its state of motion look at the example suppose if you are in a moving bus or in a train and the driver applies the brake suddenly the passenger sitting inside in the bus tends to fall forward it's because of inertia of motion so inertia of motion means it is the resistance of the body to change its state of motion and the last one inertia of direction inertia of direction means the resistance of a body to change its state of direction so example when a vehicle passes through mud the rotating wheels of the vehicle throw out mud tangentially due to inertia of direction so inertia of direction means the resistance of a body to change its state of direction then we want to discuss about the first law of motion so isaac newton derived all these laws of motion and you know isaac newton he was a great philosopher astronomer and he discovered this newton's laws of motion so newton's laws of motion there are three laws first law second law and third law so let's study about the first law of motion statement of the first law every body continues to be in a state of rest or of uniform motion unless an external force is applied i repeat every body continues to be in a state of rest or of uniform motion unless an external force is applied so according to newton's first law we can say that if a body is at rest it is always at rest right if a body is in motion it is always in motion suppose if you want to change that body from rest to motion you should apply a force on it so this is newton's first law so statement i repeat the statement according to newton's first law every body continues to be in a state of rest or of uniform motion unless an external force is applied so here you can see that one of the ball it is always at rest an object at rest it remain at rest it will remain at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force if you want to change this object from rest to motion you should apply a force 
After that, you can see that an object in motion. So, that will continue with a constant speed and direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So, every body continues to be in state of rest or of uniform motion unless an external force is applied. Next one, Newton's second law. According to Newton's second law, the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to applied force. So, rate of change of momentum, rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to directly proportional to external applied force. Here we have a derivation. We can derive the expression for force by using Newton's second law. So, consider an object of mass m is moving with an initial velocity u and after time t the velocity is changed into v. So, we, we know that momentum means the letter indicating momentum is p. Momentum means the product of mass and velocity. So, p is equal to mass into velocity. So, consider this object of mass m, its initial velocity is u and its final velocity is v. So, we can write final momentum equals final momentum equals mass into final velocity. Similarly, we can write initial momentum. So, initial momentum equals mass into initial velocity. Then we can write change of momentum. So, we can write the change of momentum, change of momentum is directly proportional to final momentum minus initial momentum. So, change of momentum is directly proportional to final momentum minus initial momentum. So, mathematically we can write change of momentum is directly proportional to mass into final velocity minus mass into initial velocity. Then rate of change of momentum. So, we can write rate of change of momentum, rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to mass into final velocity minus mass into initial velocity divided by time. So, this is rate of change of momentum. So, according to Newton's second law of motion, the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to external force. That means, we can write that external unbalanced force which is directly proportional to rate of change of momentum that is F is directly proportional to mv minus mu divided by t. Here you can see that m is the common term. So, we can take outside. So, next step we can write F is directly proportional to m into v minus u divided by t. Then we can change this directly proportionality sign into equal sign by multiplying by a constant k. So, we can write that constant k where that k is the proportionality constant. So, this k into m into v minus u divided by t. So, but from the last chapter we have studied that the rate of change of velocity that is equal to acceleration. The rate of change of velocity is acceleration. So, in this expression instead of v minus u by t we can write the letter a acceleration a. 
So we have f is equal to k into m into a. So this is the final expression of Newton's second law of motion where k is the proportionality constant. So if k is equal to 1, we can say if k is equal to 1, then f is equal to m a. So this is the final expression f is equal to mass into acceleration where m is the mass and a is the acceleration. This is the derivation part of the second law of motion. So according to Newton's second law of motion, the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to external unbalanced force. Then we can discuss about the application of Newton's second law. So already we have derived this equation f is equal to k into m a. I told you that that k is called proportionality constant. So if the value of k is equal to 1, then that time we can write f is equal to m a. So we can define the unit of force. So f, the unit of force, one unit of force is defined as the amount that produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second square in an object of 1 kilogram mass. Or in another way, we can say that 1 Newton is equal to 1 kilogram into 1 meter per second square. So this comes from this equation F is equal to m a. So the unit of force is kilogram meter per second square and it another unit is Newton. So this Newton is same as that of kilogram meter per second square. Instead of writing kilogram meter per second square, we can write Newton. So the unit of force is Newton and we can define 1 Newton of force is equal to 1 kg into 1 meter per second square. Then application of second law. Here you can see there are two pictures. So one of the cricket bowler, he is catching the ball. See that how that person catch the ball. Suppose if you are catching the ball like this, like it in the first example, suppose if you are catching the ball like this, then you may feel much pain, right? So instead of that, suppose if you are catching the ball like this, so when you are doing that catch this way, you can see that second example, look at the second example, the impact of that force is less. So to catch a fast cricket ball, a player pulls his hands backwards to prevent injury to his hands. So look at the second equation F is equal to m into v minus u by t. So if you are catching the ball like this, the time increases. Here you can see that the time increases. So if the time increases, the force will less. That means the impact of the force is less. So very comfortably you can catch that ball if you are doing so. Then other equations of motion, other forms, F is equal to m a. There are different forms. First one, F is equal to m a. And second one, F is equal to m into v minus u by t. Then if you are cross multiplying that, you will get another equation that is F t is equal to m v minus m u. Next, Newton's third law of motion. According to Newton's third law of motion, to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, I repeat, according to Newton's third law of motion, to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. When one object exerts a force on another object, the second object instantaneously exerts a force back on the first. That means, these two forces are always equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So these two forces are not cancelling each other because these two forces are acting on different objects. So they act on different objects and never on the same object. The two opposing forces are known as action and reaction. Let's see some examples. Here you can see that there are two spring balances and first spring balance is fixed on the wall, connect second spring balance, then we want to apply or want to pull that second spring balance. So both these spring balances will show same reading. 
So this A and B will show same reading but it in the opposite direction. So again we can say to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Example 2 recoiling of a gun. So when a gun is fired it exerts a forward force on the bullet. So here you can see that the accelerating force on the bullet is to the left direction. But at the same time the recoil force on the gun is to the right direction. So both these forces are acting on different objects but these two forces are equal and opposite. Then third example here you can see that one of the sailor jumps forward the force on the boat moves it backwards. One of the sailor jumps forward and the boat moves in the backward direction. So both these forces are applying on different bodies that is why these two forces are not cancelled each other. So we can conclude to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So we have discussed about Newton's laws. Then the last topic is conservation of momentum. So this topic is also very very important topic. Here also we want to study about one derivation. According to conservation of momentum, in the absence of an external unbalanced force, the total momentum remains conserved or constant. Or we can say that in the absence of an external unbalanced force, the total momentum remains conserved or we can say the momentum before collision is equal to momentum after collision. We are going to derive that expression. We want to prove this conservation of momentum. For that we have to consider two objects. First object of mass m1 and second object of mass m2. And this first object moves with an initial velocity u1 and the second object moves with an initial velocity u2. So you can see that these two objects have different masses and different velocities. So after some times these two balls will be collide on each other. So we can draw the figure like this. These two balls will be collide on each other. So this process is known as during collision. This is during collision. And this one before collision, first one before collision. So after this you can see that these two balls again moves with a different velocities. First one moves with the final velocity v1 and second one moves with the final velocity v2. So this is first body, second body. There is no any difference in case of mass. According to Newton's third law, to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So these two objects apply some forces on each other. So we can say that the force exerted by first body on second body is F12. And this force is a vector quantity, we can represent it by the vector. So F12 means force exerted by the first body on second body. So the actual expression for force is F is equal to M into V minus U divided by T. Already we have studied that it in the second law and we derived that equation also. So we can write F12 is equal to M1 into V1 minus U1 divided by time. So the timing is same for both forces same time is taken. So no need of writing T1 we can write T itself. Similarly we can write F21. So F21 means force exerted by second object on first object. So we have F21 is equal to M2 into V2 minus U2 divided by T. 
Then we want to apply Newton's third law. According to Newton's third law, to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. That means we can write F12 is equal to minus of F21. So we can write the expression F12 is equal to minus of F21. Already we got the equations for F12 and F21. Write down the equations and equate. So we can write M1 into V1 minus U1 divided by T that is equal to this minus symbol is the common term. So taking outside then write down the expression for F21 M2 into V2 minus U2 divided by time then open the bracket and before that we can cancel this T. So I told you that both this timing for both objects same so we can cancel this T and op multiplying open the bracket we can write M1 V1 minus M1 U1 equals minus M2 V2 minus M2 V2 minus into minus term plus plus M2 U2. Next step we want to write down all the positive terms together that means we can eliminate all minus terms. So how to eliminate minus terms you know that if we are writing this minus term in the right side then we can write it as plus. So we can apply that M1 V1 plus M2 V2 this minus M2 will come in this side left side. So M1 V1 plus M2 V2 equals this minus M1 U1 we can write it in right side. So this minus term will become plus M1 U1 plus M2 U2 and this is our result. So we can say that momentum after collision is equal to momentum before collision. What is this one M1 V1 plus M2 V2 momentum after collision and this one M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to momentum before collision. So we can say momentum after collision is equal to momentum before collision that means the total momentum remains conserved. Thus we proved conservation of momentum. So according to conservation of momentum in the absence of an external unbalanced force the total momentum remains conserved. So according to conservation of momentum the total momentum of an isolated system remains constant if no external force acts on the system. Let us discuss about some applications of conservation of momentum. You know that the working of the rocket conservation of momentum is used, recoiling of a gun conservation of momentum is used. Let us discuss that. So this one just we derived momentum before collision, during collision and after collision. So for doing this activity we want all these things rubber balloon, straw, adhesive tape, thread. So take a big rubber balloon you can see that a big rubber balloon and inflate it fully tie its neck using a thread. So you want to tie its neck using a thread also using a, an adhesive tape fix a straw on the surface of the balloon. Pass a thread through the straw and hold one end of the thread in your hand and fix it on the wall. Then ask your friend to hold the other end of the thread or fix it on the wall at some distance. So you can see that arrangement also. We want to do this activity like this. Now remove the thread tied on the neck of balloon. Let the air escape from the mouth of the balloon. So as we remove the thread tied on the neck of the balloon, the air from inside the balloon escapes from the mouth of the balloon. As a reaction the balloon moves in the opposite direction. So we can explain one more activity. So for that the things required test tube, water, cork, burner and test tube holder. 
So, take a test tube of good quality material and put a small amount of water in it. Suspend the test tube horizontally as shown in the figure. So, you can see the figure. We want to take some water inside in the test tube, then keep one cork tightly, then apply this gas burner, want to boil the water. So, heat the test tube with a burner until water vaporizes and the cork blows out. So, as the cork blows out to the right, an equal reaction develops on the test tube, moving the test tube to the left. In a direction opposite to the direction of the cork, the test tube recoils in the direction opposite to the direction of the cork. Again, this proved conservation of momentum. So, conclusion, the forces of action and reaction which are equal in magnitude act in opposite directions. Further, in the absence of any external force, the linear momentum of the system is conserved. So, today's section we have discussed about Newton's first law, second law, third law and conservation of momentum. Thank you all.